Today I got a Dell Inspiron 3580 with a Pentium Gold processor. I'm going to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD. I'll show you how to do it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got this Dell Inspiron 3000 series, 15.6 inch laptop. It's, uh, the model is 3580, Inspiron 3580. Uh, it's very slow. The um, customer brought it in. She doesn't do a whole lot with it, mostly just strictly online stuff. Um, she has very little stuff on here. She's using about 90 gigabytes total of her whole hard drive. It's got a mechanical hard drive. I'm going to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD, a two and a half inch SATA SSD. Um, it's got the Pentium, was it Pentium Gold 5405U dual core processor, like 2.3 gigahertz. Um, it is an, eight, I believe it's an eighth gen. Let me go to Windows Update here. I don't know how well you guys can see this, but um, just wait for this to open up here. I'm not connected to the internet right now, by the way. So, so Windows 11 will run on this because the Pentium Golds are part of the eighth generation Intel processor family. But she doesn't, she said she doesn't want to change right now. So I'm going to click on stay on Windows 10 for now and um, let her, you know, keep using Windows 10. But it will support Windows 11. Um, but the biggest problem is it's really slow. It takes forever to boot up, it's just sluggish. The processor doesn't help, but I've worked on so many of these 3580s uh, with the hard drives are just clunky and slow. So I gave her an option. Inside of this, there are two ways to upgrade. It does have an M.2 slot for an NVMe SSD, and it's got the two and a half inch bay for a two and a half inch. Uh, we chose, or she chose, the MX500 Crucial 500 gig SATA SSD. It's more than enough space for her. I always give the customer a choice. Do you want an NVMe? or do you want to go with the SATA? Budget has a lot to do with it with, with a lot of my customers. They just want it to go faster, but they don't want to spend a lot of money. And plus, this week, all I got left in stock are one terabyte NVMe SSDs. I got a crap ton of SATAs, various sizes like this. And, you know, the cost difference, you know, they weigh it, you know, and they're like, no, I just, they didn't want to spend the money on a one terabyte. I've gone through all my 250 and 500 gig M.2 drives because this is right after Christmas between Christmas and New Year I'm just kind of sold out I get tons of people that come in here they get cheap new laptops for Christmas that only have like 128 gig you know SSD in it and and they want to put music and all their pictures and stuff on it pretty soon the drives full in like 10 minutes so I've been doing quite a few upgrades uh, NVMe drives like 501 terabyte so anyway, all I got laying around, you know, in stock, I got like 21 terabytes left in stock at this moment. I'll get some smaller ones in that next week. But she doesn't want to spend the money. So this is going to work great. Don't get me wrong. These are very fast. This is going to be three times faster, probably more than what she's got right now. And um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to simply open up. I'm going to take the hard drive out. I am going to clone it over on my cloning station. If you wanted to clone this yourself at home, all you would need is a little USB adapter like this to SATA SSD. Just plug it in. <clears throat> and these are like 10 bucks on Amazon. These adapters goes right into the USB port, just like that. You can get these in USB-C as well. And you can download, like in this case, the Crucial uses the Acronis True Image cloning software. It's totally free. I'll stick a link down below where you can download it and install that on the computer and just clone it this way, right from the hard drive, right under this, shut it down, take out the hard drive, put this in. And you can also get an adapter. If you are doing the NVMe upgrade, just a second, let me grab one here. You can get an adapter like this. I'm just showing you the different options, guys. This is a uh, USB A or C. Uh, this adapter here works great for M NVMe drives. This, this one here supports only NVMe M.2 drives, not SATA M.2. So I use these a lot in the shop, but for time sakes, I'm just going to pull it, do it on my cloning station over there. It takes about five minutes and boom, get her up and going. But I am going to get the um, Windows 10 all up to date because I think she's got 21H2. I'll probably put 22H2 Windows 10 out of 4 make sure that's all up to date. Not the 11, just 
Windows 10 22H2. But one thing I always tell you when you're doing a clone, whether you're pulling the hard drive out and doing it on another computer, or if you do it with the, with the USB dongle like I got here, all Dells, eighth generation and newer, I've been noticing that they're all, if you go to, you go to settings, go to update and security, you have to disable device encryption right down here. Click on that. I already did it on this one. It was enabled. Um, it took about two hours, two and a half hours to shut off drive encryption. How fast it turns it off is solely dependent on the speed of the processor. On a faster system with like an i5 or an i7 or something like that, it goes a lot quicker. But you can see I got it turned off. When you're all done, you get the new drive in. After the cloning, you can always turn this back on. It's not that big a deal. It turns on a lot quicker than it turns off, trust me. But you have to do that, otherwise your clone just won't work when the encryption's enabled. So make sure that is disabled first and foremost. So like I said, I'm, I'm gonna basically shut it down, pull out the hard drive, clone it over there, and come back and put it in, boot it up, and then I'll just kind of tune it up, clean it all up, and get it all running good. So let me go ahead and shut it down here real quick. Unplug Mr. Power Cord. I just got I got tape on it in a couple of places, cover up some of our private stuff, just trying to respect their customer's privacy. That's all that is. That's all that is. <clears throat> and it does have a lighted keyboard. This model has a lighted keyboard. It is a touch screen. It's got an optical drive over there. Does not have USB C, but it's got SD card slot inside there, another USB port there, two USB over here. It's got Ethernet, HDMI. She probably paid 500 bucks or something like that for this three years ago. Um, so there, it's all shut down. I've already taken out most of the screws, the ones along the front here, a good number one, or I'm sorry, number zero Phillips screwdriver with a good magnetic tip to pull the screws out. Works, works really good. These are very small Phillips heads, so like I said, a number zero, number one's gonna booger them up. So along the back on these Dells, these three screws in the back, they don't actually come out of the chassis. You just have to loosen them until they don't click and spin anymore. But they will stay in the bottom chassis when you pull it out. Just give them lots of turns until they, they're done turning. Pretty straightforward. And then these two screws here, this one here holds in the optical drive and this one here, but these two here are very short, different length screws and these other ones around the perimeter. So let me pop those out real quick. I've got screw piles everywhere. I've got a ton of jobs. But it's always super busy between Christmas and New Year around here with, with upgrades, always. So we're going to slide out the optical drive, boom, just like that. And over here, we've got two little tiny screws here we have to remove. They're very tiny. Again, a number zero. Phillips works really good. Get those out without stripping out the heads. You don't want to do that. A couple of turns is all it takes to yank them out of there. <clears throat> so all the screws are out or loose. Now we're going to flip it back over. And I'm going to use trusty Mr. Blue Triangle Spudger here. And I'm just going to slip right in the seam here along the top perimeter. And just gently be careful over here where the CD-ROM drives go. Don't push too hard because you'll end up breaking this piece of plastic that goes across the top of the optical drive. So be conscious of that. Just little tips I like to give throughout the years you learn <laughs> what breaks easy and what doesn't. <sighs> Pretty much that simple guys. So I'm going to carefully close it. It's still turned off. Kind of jiggle it a little bit here and it should pop right up. Boom. Not too much for us at all. That's the bottom, the inside of the bottom. Um, if you're a novice and you're not comfortable poking and prodding around in here, I would recommend it anyway, I guess. Unplug the battery. Um, you don't want to drop any screws or screwdrivers onto that motherboard because you will fry it in two seconds. Here's the hard drive. Here's the M.2 slot. Like I said, this customer, after giving the choice, they just want to go with the cheaper alternative here. But either way, it's going to make this thing a whole lot faster. But you typically could put an M.2 NVMe SSD over here, put a one terabyte or whatever, two terabyte hard drive or another two and a half inch SSD and have get lots of storage going on here. So you got a couple options there. It's got eight gigabytes of DDR4, which is good, better than 
four gigs. It's got an extra slot. I have put um, 32 gigs in these before just to see. I haven't tried 64. But I believe with those Pentium being part of the 8th gen, the 5405, I think Intel will say that it'll, uh, the CPU will support up to 64 gigs, but I think that depends on the motherboard. I'm not exactly sure the chipset that's on this board on these models. But I have done 32, 16, 8, 4, whatever, um, with no problems at all. But um, I also asked her about any more RAM. No, she didn't want to do that right now. Again, it's just a money thing. Everybody's broke after Christmas, you know. So we're going to pop this out, but first I'm going to unhook the battery. This cable just pulls straight back, not up, but it just slides back out of that little connector there. Oh, well, you can see this, but I'm just going to take my little nylon non-conductive tool here. Try to get a hold of the edge there. Slip it on back and see how easy that comes out. So there, after you do that though, if you're going to go to that trouble, make sure you open it up carefully because it's all exposed. And let's hold that power button down here a few times. Kind of drain of a drain all the power out of the capacitors and whatnot. Pull that keyboard out. Look very very clean inside. So there. Now that we've done that, still don't touch anything. You don't have to. Very important. I'm only going to be working really over here where the hard drive is. So I'm going to stay away from the motherboard. There's four mounting screws. One here, 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 and here. To get the oops, get the caddy out. We can clone it, the hard drive caddy. But like I said, I would have rather put an M.2 drive in here and then after the clone's all done, you know, you format this, you have an empty one terabyte hard drive, but being a Pentium Gold processor and not a super speed demon, it's not like a gaming laptop or anything, guys, not by any stretch. But still, you load up tons of photos and stuff like that. Come on, get out of there. So, I've got the four screws out. We should be able to just gently lift this guy up. Now, they don't give you a lot of slack on the SATA cable down in here. So, you don't don't be just jerking on. You have to kind of carefully try to get a hold of the plug here without breaking it. Some of these come off real easy, like that one. Some come off quite hard. You got to be very careful you don't break the plug here on the end of the SATA, at the end of the SATA cable. Now we got four screws holding the drive in the caddy. Got to get it out of the caddy so I can clone it. Very short little screws. Doesn't take a lot to get them out, but I love doing it. I love doing SSD upgrades because it just makes such a such a noticeable difference. People are always totally surprised how much faster it makes your computer, whether it's an M.2 drive. Or in this case, the SATA SSD. So there's Mr. Caddy out the way. So now all I'm going to do is take our new 500 gig. Don't need the dongle because I'm not going to use that. I'm going to take this. This I'm going to go over to my cloning station. I'm going to clone it. Only take about maybe five, six, seven, eight minutes, somewhere in that neighborhood, to clone, put it in, tune it up make it a lot faster for us. So I'll be back in just a few, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Done cloning. It went fine. Took about seven and a half, eight minutes for a full clone. So we don't need Mr. Hard Drive anymore. Like I said, you could, if you're putting an M.2 drive in here, you could still use this for storage if you wanted to. But let's go ahead and mount this in the caddy here. Kind of do it in reverse now. We gotta remember to hook our battery back up when all is said and done. Been there, done that. <laughs> Busy day. One of us will forget to plug a battery back in. Get the four screws back in here. <clears throat> Hope everybody had a good Christmas. Fun Christmas, family time. I don't know where you, you know, where I live here in northern Michigan. Boy, we got hammered. We got a lot of that blizzard here. Started snowing like Thursday morning before Christmas weekend, and it snowed all the way through Tuesday morning the following week. We got a lot of snow. We got some areas like almost about two feet. 
the one dump not counting the drifts the wind cold so I'm gonna put that back in carefully try to plug it back in here it's very hard I know my hands in the way guys but I just got to get this cable hooked back up hopefully you have a good new year stick to all your resolutions whatever they may be mine is uh, stay busy and keep working hard Hoping to get, I was hoping I get hit 30,000 subscribers by the end of this year, but only got a couple days left. I'm not sure if I can make it. I'm 29.3 plus, I think, is where I'm at right now. So if you haven't hit subscribe, do it now, please. <laughs> and hit the like button and ring the bell so you can get notified when I put up a new video. Appreciate everybody that subscribes and watches. I really do. I wish I had time to do more videos. I really, really do. Hopefully this year, I guess that's going to be my resolution is to try to just crank out more and more videos. Just find the time to do it. So now I'm going to hook the battery back up here carefully. But once you touch that or hook up that battery, be very careful over here. You're not dropping or touching things you don't have to touch. I don't want to see any accidents out there. So I'm just going to slide it back in the connector here. I'm going to get a hold of the edge of my fingernail. I'll make sure it's in all the way. Ooh, my stomach was growling. I hope you guys didn't hear that. Sorry. All right, we got we got battery. <clears throat> We're not doing any more RAM. She didn't want to do that. We got this. We're good. And I already checked as far as clean, cleanliness. This thing is like spotless inside here. Very, very clean. Very clean. So no worries there. If there's any amount of dust buildup in there, I definitely would have put the air compressor to it. So I'm not going to... I am going to lock these screws down in the back here just for opening and closing on the hinges. I don't want to, anything to pop apart on me. Once I'm completely done, I'll button it back up with all the rest of the screws here, obviously, but I don't ever do that until I know for sure. Got a good clone or whatever. Now, when you first turn these on after doing a clone, either, you know, on a different computer or if you're using the dongle like I was showing you earlier when you first boot these up Windows likes to do a quick scan of the drive it'll check all the partitions make everything you know, make sure everything's kosher that's normal so don't panic if it comes up and says scanning and repairing or scanning or whatever I'm gonna put our two little screws back over here for the optical drive I want to pop that optical drive back in for the first boot just so it's in there and all the drive letters are where they're supposed to be. But going with a SATA SSD is definitely the least expensive way to make your computer a lot faster. So I wasn't going to put all the screws back in, but put these two little short ones in here and here for the optical drive. Not sure this is a touch screen painting gold I'm not sure if it's a I got a I just grabbed a Dell 45 watt adapter it could be a 65 I'm not sure it should be a 45 but there I got power core let's turn it on for the first time and see what happens these crucial MX 500 drives are great they're very affordable 250 500 one terabyte two terabyte they're they're good good fast solid drives now here where it says we don't want to hit it, we don't want to skip this, I'm just going to let that do that. It doesn't take very long at all. And you could skip it and it'll still boot, but the next time you boot it'll keep trying to do it until you let it finish. So I just let it finish the first time out. Uh, that glossy screen is hard to see there guys, sorry. You can see all my mess over here <laughs> the screen. Busy, busy. 
It already boots a thousand times faster. Holy cow. What a difference an SSD makes. But I still got a lot of tuning up that I'm going to do. Well, not a lot, but I'm going to get um, 22H2 Windows 10 on here. Again, she doesn't want to switch to Windows 11. I told her when she dropped it off that this, you know, being an 8th gen, it will support Windows 11, but she's just one of those kind of people not ready for the change just set. So let's go to start. I'm going to go to settings here real quick. Now, at this point, if you want to re-enable <coughs> drive encryption, you can certainly do that. Oops. At a funny angle here. Oh, there we go. My bad. And again, I'm not connected to the internet because I don't want it to start downloading updates right now. But I'm going to go to system here. I just want to look at it real quick earlier when she brought in. But uh, my brain's just flooded with computers right now. So let me see. What about, yeah, it is 21H2, Windows 10, 8 gigs of RAM, of course. Uh, open up File Explorer real quick. This thing is so much faster already, guys, I'm telling you. There's our 500 gig SSD. No problemo. So, again, if you want to go back to home on your settings, get over here. Go back here to update and security. And down here in device encryption, you can click on that and then just turn it back on. And here's the 22H2 for Windows. I keep telling it to stay on Windows 10. Just, you know, I, it, it's going to end up getting Windows 11 on it. <clears throat> She'll just shut it down one night and not realize that it's downloading and installing. <clears throat> Excuse me, bugging my throat. Um, but anyway, I told her it's not the end of the world. It'll run just fine on here. I told her it's not that different. The amount of stuff, she keeps her desktop just the way you see it clean. Uh, most, of her, most of her work is just done on the internet through the cloud. All of her work um, that she does is all through the cloud. She doesn't even have office on here or anything like that. So anyway, we got a good clone. Got a nice little speedy upgrade for her. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like uh, button. That would be great. And ring the little bell. And I hope you all have a really good new year, a safe new year. And spend time with family, family first, and friends. Thanks again, guys.